The response to our previous video on the top 10 female songwriters of all time was nothing short of astounding. Your passion, your knowledge, your shared love of music gave us a wealth of new names to explore. And after sifting through the comments and doing our own follow-up research to weed out the artists who weren't actually songwriters, we've crafted a fresh list to honor those we missed and you, our audience, for engaging so wonderfully in the comments. Thank you. Stick around as we dig much deeper into each artist. We felt obligated to share what we found with you about these incredible women. And stick around to the end for a link to the original top 10 list that inspired this deep dive. Without further ado, here we go. Of all the incredible female songwriters we missed last time, number one is clearly Lucinda Williams. There are a few good reasons to put Lucinda Williams atop this list of the best female songwriters. Not only is she one of the sharpest melodists in modern music, country or otherwise, she writes lyrics that are equally at home being sung off a jukebox or pondered as poetry. But the best reason is this. After a 30-year career, she's still evolving. In the past five years, she's made two double albums that take her writing to deeper existential territory while maintaining those superb melodies. She's collaborated with jazz great Charles Lloyd on the 2018 album Vanished Gardens, and she's done a transformative cover version of one of her own albums, This Sweet Old World. Throw in some politically charged songs she's unveiled in recent shows, and you've got an American treasure. The next amazing songwriter we forgot in the first video is Laura Nyro. History has largely forgotten how visionary Laura Nyro's first stretch of albums was, but their mix of pop, soul, and jazz is still ahead of its time. The story goes that Miles Davis was in the studio at one point and decided there was nothing he could add. As a lyricist, Laura Nyro blurred sensual and spiritual matters decades before Prince got the idea. Even on her underappreciated last album, Walk the Dog and Light the Light, you'll find the best song, The Descent of Luna Rose, ever written about PMS. A handful of AM radio artists made hit singles out of her songs. The real mystery is why a singer this good never had one on her own. The third woman we somehow missed is the unforgettable Billie Holiday. It's true that Lady Day didn't write, or at least didn't publish many songs, only about a dozen bear her credit. But one of them was the profound God Bless the Child, whose chorus was apparently borrowed from her mother. Her signature song, Lady Sings the Blues, was also hers. Even on outside material, she had a sensitive ear, choosing two of the toughest pieces, Strange Fruit and Gloomy Sunday, that any jazz singer attempted. Interestingly, she plays a female songwriter in one of her only films, the 1947 musical New Orleans. Her character, a singing maid, composes Do You Know What It Means to Miss New Orleans and sings it to Louis Armstrong. Coming in fourth is the country music legend, Loretta Lynn. One of country music's great storytellers and one of the best female songwriters, Loretta Lynn stretched the boundaries of what a woman could say in a hit song, beginning with her first indie label hit, I'm a Honky Tonk Girl, about downfall after heartbreak. During the 60s, she was regularly banned by country radio for strong songs such as Rated X, about the social trials of a divorcee, Fist City, where she plans to send a romantic rival, and the self-explanatory Don't Come Home a Drinkin' with Loving on Your Mind. Yet the songs were hits anyway, as were her two very different early 70s takes on motherhood, One's on the Way and The Pill. Even during her later comeback with Jack White, she was still the main songwriter. At number five, we have Valerie Simpson, one half of the powerhouse songwriting team Ashford & Simpson. Their preference for ballads may explain why Ashford & Simpson aren't cited more often as one of the great songwriting teams, but Let's Go Get Stoned and I Don't Need No Doctor Alone, both written for Ray Charles and covered by everybody, should have enshrined them for good. They didn't adopt their trademark elegant style until they got to Motown, where they were entrusted with launching Diana Ross's solo career recasting Ain't No Mountain High Enough, which they'd written for Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, as an epic. Since A and S were a team in every respect, you can't isolate either one's input, but it's a safe bet that the lyric idea of Chaka Khan's I'm Every Woman was hers. At the sixth spot, we have Nina Simone. If she had been a more prolific writer, Nina might be remembered as the number one best female songwriter of all time. As it was, she wrote only when there was something she needed to say, and she said it forcefully and artfully. Mississippi Goddamn and To Be Young, Gifted and Black remain remarkably strong wake-up calls, and her rewrite of Revolution upped the ante on the Beatles' original version. But before pegging her for strictly topical songs, we'd direct you to Consummation, 
from the Silk and Soul album, A Love Song of Mystical Power. In our seventh spot, we recognize Karen Carpenter. While often overshadowed by her vocal talent, Carpenter was also an accomplished songwriter, crafting songs that were intimate and introspective. These songs not only showcased Karen's songwriting prowess, but also provided a glimpse into her innermost thoughts and feelings, allowing fans to connect with her on a deeper level. At number eight, we have Madonna. Her ever-changing persona hinges as much as anything on the songs she's recorded. You might say she writes great character songs and then becomes the characters. After borrowing a pair of manifestos from other writers, Material Girl and Like a Virgin, she became the co-writer of much of her material and turned out melodic gems such as Live to Tell and True Blue, while the world was still talking about her costumes. She's no slouch as a lyricist either. When you consider how hard it was to come up with a truly daring song angle in 1986, Papa Don't Preach is even more impressive. Next, at number 9, we're adding someone given to us in an offline comment, blues legend Memphis Minnie. Many of the songs Memphis Minnie wrote in the early 1900s became blues rock cornerstones, most notably When the Levee Breaks, which Led Zeppelin borrowed for their song of the same name. She also wrote Chauffeur Blues, which Jefferson Airplane covered, among many others, and even Bumblebee which became a terrific power pop song for the searchers. But Minnie still has a good 150 gems that have never been covered. You'd think tough young bands would be lining up to record I Don't Want That Junk Out of You. Finally, at number 10, we're including Ellie Greenwich. This one is because of the research you all forced us to do. When you think about the Brill Building songwriters who crossed over to the singer-songwriter era, Carol King is the one that comes to mind. But Ellie Greenwich's catalog stands nearly as tall. Her 60s hits were as romantic, Chapel of Love, Giddy, Dadu Ron Ron, Street Tough, Leader of the Pack, and Glorious, River Deep Mountain High, as anything else in that era. And, like King, she had a regular co-writer, Jeff Barry. Greenwich didn't record a game-changing songwriter album, but she should have. Her 1973 album, Let It Be Written, Let It Be Sung, which takes many of her 60s hits to sophisticated jazz territory, is a true lost treasure by one of the best female songwriters that deserves more recognition. And there you have it, our top 10 female songwriters that we totally missed in our original top 10 female songwriters list. Click the card on your screen to go see who was in the original top 10 before you comment and say we forgot them this time, please. Each of these additional 10 women has made a significant contribution to the world of music, and we thank you, our audience, for bringing them to our attention. It's why we love you all. Continue to hold us accountable when our top 10 lists can be better. Be sure to check out our original video if you haven't already, and keep the conversation going. Your input shapes these lists, and we appreciate every single suggestion.